Alright, so I'm probably going to keep collecting Gwent cards for a little while, but uh, I figure I might as well follow up on a little loose thing that's just sort of sitting around. This is a level 11 quest, I think, called Following the Thread. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and get started. Don't like folk wandering around here. Oh yeah? Well, got a beast you need someone to get rid of? I'm here about the notice. Uh, Supervisor Lund posted it. Yeah, a beast haunts the outskirts, murdering folk. Got them scared to leave their homes after dusk. Like to talk to this supervisor. Too bad he don't receive petitioners. So what's he do exactly? Delivers relief on behalf of the city council, flour and groats for the paupers, meaning he don't do it personally. He's got men for that. He himself, he were. Uh... Supervisors. Exactly. I aim to hunt down this monster. Best hurry then, some other bloke's already after it. When do you find the last victim? Just last night. Hubert, a beggar, but a decent man. I'd let him sleep in the shed from time to time. That one on the right. Eustace hasn't come for the corpse yet. It's lying in there where I found him. Any eyewitnesses to these attacks? No, just the bodies. Beast appears only at night. Chooses isolated victims. Who took the contract? Didn't see the man. Was just told some brave fool turned up. Thanks. So long. Well, here we go then. We don't even get, we don't even get to find hardly any information about the uh, attack itself. Just some creature killed some poor person named Hubert. Slightly confusing because I think an episode ago we were introduced to a character named Hubert, but I guess they're just different ones. I assume first names and all that. Hey, corpse. Blood's all sucked out. A lesser vampire? That would be a funny trend to immediately find Blood, another vampire. but not human. Monster was wounded. Not the marks of a Garcane or a Flutter. Gotta be an Ekimara. Oh, an Ekimara. Well, those are easy. This will be an open and shut cl a case if we actually get attacked by it. Oh. Is it going to the... W oh, nope. It's still easy to follow. Hit. Climb. Oh, I have to leave Witcher Sense mode. There we go. Where are you going, Ekimara? 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 I'm gonna ruin you when I find... Oh, Why? Why must you go across the ocean? Seems like it had lost some strength. Was sneaking along the shoreline. Tracks end here. Ought to look for prints on the other side. Well, there's only so many places that would qualify as being the other side, but I'm not getting wet today. I haven't used one of these since we had to go to that one island for the, uh... Oh wow, that was the quest, w the quest with Kira? That was a very long time ago. Well, across we go. Let's ruin this shit. Clunk. <laughs> I didn't even see that, actually. Put that stuff ashore. Here we go. Now I hardly even need to get wet. Nope, not at all. Made the jump. Oh, and a new marker, so we can actually teleport here. Always happy to find more of those. Dead rats, so it's it's been feeding to recover while it probably hides away in this building. Rat corpses. Not a drop of blood left in him. Gotta be an Ekimara. Yeah, they, they don't leave a lot of uh, ambiguity here. It's about as strong as clues can get, but we've established that if it's not a greater vampire, they're pretty dumb, these regular vampires that we can encounter. Oh. Oh, that's someone dying, probably. Or it's the other hero. Oh. Did he, he must have already found it. Yeah, she's so strong. I'm so scared of her right now. How will I ever make it through this fight? Just face it, dude. You're the one that sucks here. I got this. Alright, well, nice for trying, Lambert. Greetings, Lambert. Damn, it's good to see you, Wolf. Decide to do some hunting in Novigrad? For as I remember, you never liked this city. 
Still don't. Thing is, I got a certain matter to take care of. What have you been up to? Any luck on the path? A lot, in fact. Quite the takings in Lan Exeter. Was asked to hunt down a giant who turned out to be a forest troll and some bandits. Bandits? Came as a package with the troll. The matter you mentioned. Anything I can help with? Hmm. Maybe. But we'll talk about that later. Got a reward to collect. I'm kinda in a hurry. Let's say you've earned half. What the hell? Join you for that later. Wait up for me. Fine, but try not to take too long. Know where the supervisor has his office? Yeah, had a chat with the guardsman outside it. See you there. Whoops. I was a little too passive with that. I was more thinking of like, oh yeah, you take care of whatever. I'm not too attached to this case. I was kind of thinking in terms of like, I'll pick the option that gets rid of, that doesn't take the money. He can just have it. But I didn't read properly. Oh well. I'll just see you guys when we, when we get there. That was an opportunity to teleport there, which is kind of a bummer to miss. Geralt looks suave as hell with his, uh, his close-cropped clean hair and everything. Let's collect our reward. So? What do you think? We did what we had to do. Time to pay up. Wait here, I'll go see the supervisor, get your reward. Do that ourselves. No reason you should abandon your post. Hmm. Hmm. Can't argue with reason. Go on in. Psych, the supervisor's a vampire. We dealt with the monster at the docks. Here for our reward. Witches? Since when do you travel in pairs? A lot of dangers lie in wait for a lone witcher. Bandits, for example. I advise you to change your tone. Where's Yad Karadin? Talk. I can't... There should be a stay quiet option where I can just let him do what he's wanting to, but now I have to interrupt here. Who? Trust me, Geralt, this is important. There's something I gotta know. I do not know any Karadin. Take your coin for the before and bugger off. Before I lose my temper. Where's Yad Karadin? Asking you for the last time. Guards! To the dungeon with them! <laughs> this ends so poorly for you. Oh, you silly, silly. Look at them dancing in unison. It's adorable. Aww. Aww. Oh, shit. <laughs> They all got. They all recovered at the same time, and then went back into the animation. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'll take the crowns. I don't really care. I don't really want to deal with your heavy ass junk weapons. Oh, that one's master item. That's worth more at least. All right, Lambert, you got some explaining to do. You out here? This guy's more trouble than the Ekimara. Karadin's disappeared. I swear. The others, too. Uh, I only know of Vienne. What about Vienne? She drinks at the Seven Cats. They're day and night. See? You can be helpful. Well, he plays well with others. That was murder. Was that really necessary? Yes. More guardsmen will show soon. Let's go. Meet me at the Seven Cats. Tell you everything there. The Tavern Vienne frequents? Yeah, see you later. Well, obviously we're gonna have to read about him, right? Glossary. Characters. Lambert has to be in here, right? Why would he not be? It's our JK. Yep. The youngest among the witchers of Kaer Morden, and perhaps the last ever trained within its walls. By the state of our tale, Lambert has proven his chops many times over, having hunted down many a mighty beast and traversed nearly all the continent's realms several times over. Yet he had also developed a reputation for arrogance and sardonic humor, and his gruff and at times effectively blunt manner could irritate even his fellow witchers of the School of the Wolf. 
Whatever his vices, it went without saying that Lambert would brave the fires of any hell for his companions. I have no idea if there's if you guys can hear it or not, but there's the occasional background sort of thump noise. That's because I'm recording this on 4th of July. I don't really have an interest in fireworks, but I can't stop them from happening. So, <laughs> they're just going to be an ongoing thing. Unfortunately, I can't just take days like this off. I mean, I'm not missing out on anything because I don't care about 4th of July, but... As, I mean, I don't care about the actual, like, fireworks celebrations, but I can't take off, take a no day off for noise reasons because then I just miss days of videos because this is an important day to record on. All right, high time you explain some things. Why'd you kill Lund? What's this all about? Want the short version or the long one? Let me hear the whole thing. I had a friend. Aiden was his name. You had a friend? Oh, he's fucking hilarious. I met him soon after I'd accepted a contract to lift the curse from the Ogre of Elander. Aiden had been hired to kill it. He was a witcher from the School of the Cat. As far as I remember, the Ogre was killed in the end. Yeah. After it gutted my employer, we really didn't have a choice. I cut a deal with Aiden. We joined forces, split the reward for killing the ogre between us. After that, we worked together a lot. Hands down the best man I'd ever met. I mean, I like you, you know that. Still, no comparison. What happened to him? Some time ago, Aiden took on a contract to lift a curse off a duke's daughter. It was a political mess from the start. Then there was hatred for the School of the Cat to deal with. They worked hard to deserve that hate. Basically turned hired assassins. Aiden wasn't like that. Anyway, some of the Duke's courtiers had designs. Weren't at all keen on the curse being lifted from the Duke's firstborn. So a band of trained assassins ambushed Aiden. Murdered him. Our dear supervisor was one of them. And he had Keridin? The assassin's leader. And the one to deal the mortal blow. Sorry about your friend. Don't need your sympathy. Just your help. We have to talk to Vien. Must have had enough to drink by now. Let's go. Vien. What do you want? We want to see Yad Keridin. <laughs> now, why would I help you? It's really important to my friend here. And what will I get out of it? Pay for your beer, for starters. Then we'll see how valuable your information is. I was part of Caradin's band, but when was that? I don't know where to find him. I've fallen out with a lot. Besides, he's no longer chummy with his old mates. Word around town is he's changed. Caradin's changed? What do you mean? He's dropped all his old connections. Stopped taking on petty killings. He's hidden himself away in some hole. Must be planning something big. Who else was in Keridan's band? Aside from me, Sleaze, Hammond, and Lund. But they scattered all over the world. Sleaze went to Tresigal, Hammond to Skellige, and Lund. Lund's dead. <laughs> Finally met his match. <laughs> Well, you've only Hammond or Sleaze to talk to you then. This Sleaze. Where can we find her? She's done well for herself. Runs a brothel in Tresigal, the kind rich men frequent. Or suck information out of them. Then she sells it. Name of this brothel? The Black Lily. Sleaze always did have horrible taste. 
We need information about Hammond. Carradine's right-hand man once. When the band broke up, he went back to Pharaoh once he had come. He's a pirate now. Even the Arles treat him with respect. What about you? What's your story? Scoyatel. Unit was decimated, so I joined Carradine. They never treated me as an equal. No. I could hit a sparrow from a hundred paces, but I was never good enough for Carradine. He always preferred that cancelese. You have a hand in the murder of the Witcher, Aiden? Perhaps. I don't remember. Satisfied? She doesn't know anything. We need to talk to Hammond and Solis. Don't go looking for Karazin. If he senses you nipping at his heels, he'll kill you without batting an eye. We'll see. As for you... No, Lambert. Right. Better to leave her like this. What about my coin? Arseholes. You gotta help me, Geralt. Best thing will be to split up. You sail to Skellige. Try to squeeze something out of Hammond. I'll go to Tredegor and meet with Selyse. Lambert, let's talk about this. No, let's not. This is one of those situations, serious situations, when you don't ask unnecessary questions and just help your friend. Where will we meet once I'm back? At the Nowhere Inn. All right, I'm off. Good luck. Go to Pharaoh and and look for Hammond. Why is the icon right here? Hey Lampert. How you doing? Geralt? Just just hanging out. Alright, so where are they trying to send me to now? Skellige Isles, I assume? Yeah, that's a whole thing we're gonna deal with later. I think I think I just picked up another quest that's going to just be something I just follow up on when I get to Skellige, right? That's where Pharaoh is, I think. Anyway, we'll, we'll go, we'll look into something else. Alright, that was a little opportunity to mix things up a little bit. Thought it might amount to more than it did, but it'll be stuff that we follow up on later. Now I'm looking for a chance to play for yet another unique card, this time from Vime Vivalde. Well, well, look who's here. The White Wolf himself in my humble establishment. How can I be of service? Your eyes don't look like they go in the same direction. Ooh, currency. Got some coin I'd like to convert into crowns. You've come to the right place. A better rate you'll not find anywhere in the city. Your eyes don't look in the same direction, do they? Ooh, I just got 1430 crowns. Jesus Christ, I have 12,479 crowns. That's, that's an improvement. How can I be of service? This guy just happened to be the bank guy. They're totally using Gwent as an excuse to introduce you to as many characters as possible that are either important to story stuff or just are basic gameplay mechanics that you wouldn't know, be able to find as easily otherwise. Because it's so boring to have a quest that's like, go visit the bank so that you know the bank exists. Because this is World of Warcraft. How's business? Really? That's the best you got? That's like asking a fisherman if they're biting or an old gran about her health. Business is booming. There's profit to be made from war, provided you the know-how. Before Nilfgaard had even crossed the Pontar, I'd contracted for insured deliveries of wood and iron from Kovir, reaped a sevenfold return on my investment. Nice. So you might think, but then there's the non-human poll tax, the church's tithe, war taxes, and my overhead. Subtract all that and you're left with a pittance. A dozen or so chests and no more. You play Gwent, don't you? Oh, sure. Because I'm a dwarf. Is that it? Do you also believe I know every other bleeding dwarf in existence and at the end of each day, I deepen the mine shaft in my cellar? So you play or not? Aye, I play. I didn't realize that Gwent could be a racially 
stereotypical gay. Okay. So play me. Stake a unique card, maybe. Why not? I like unique cards. So if I lose, do I do I lose a unique card? I'm not really putting one up to bet. I also haven't been losing, so it's a little hard to tell, I suppose. Let's see. So now I've got quite a number of special cards now, right? Yeah, I've got I've got my collection of three, and I'm slowly getting more and more interesting cards. I wonder if I should be ha uh, stocking some weather cards or not. I feel like the pure. I feel like my current strategy is working so far. I guess if I if I'm continuing to not lose, I shouldn't be in a big hurry to to, to change it. Okay, their faction perk makes them go first. That's totally acceptable to me. There's the siege expert, one of the people I most frequently sub out. Yep, we have one we have one siege weapon, so nope to you. Better. Still though, holy fuck, not a single hero. This is a terrible draw. They're not even good card. Oh man, T and two spies. I mean, I guess those could technically make me draw an extra card, but that's about it. These are some garbage draws. No medics. Not, I, I didn't draw any of my two or three medic options or any of my champion options. I didn't even happen to get a pair of uh, tight bonds. The t my tight bond characters are not even ones that work together. Jesus. I'm half tempted to get rid of... Com I don't know. Commander's Horn is the only place I can possibly get power out of at this point, so I probably should hold on to it. I'll try swapping this boring card to hopefully get another tight bond card, or maybe a champion. What did I get? Oh, I got a medic. That's... that's something. Hopefully he's just garbage. Oh, five power card, drop the bet. Let's see. My starting hand is so garbage. I think I'm just gonna make him win the first round, and blow both of my, uh... I'll spend- I'll spend both of my spies. Yeah. Just try to fill in- Try to draw some better cards here. Oh, there we go. There's some tight bond. And of course he used decoy accordingly. If I'm lucky, he'll play it back towards me and I'll get to use decoy on it to draw even more cards. I got a hero. Awesome. Two heroes. That's way better. And it's a medic, so now I have two medics. Is, that, is, that, is he using muster? All the more reason to let him have this round, basically. Although he'd be pretty screwed if I had uh, the bitter cold card at this point. Huh, he never played one of the medics back at me. So I can't... I can't grab it with the decoy, and I can't use my... I can't use... I, yeah, don't really have any tricks right now. I'm just gonna let him blow some cards and enjoy the fact that I have a bigger hand now. Yep, sounds like the thing to, thing to do. Now that I have an actual hand, I should be better conditioned to deal with him. Oh, look at him playing a, a fucking... That son of a bitch, that's, he, that's, he, that's what he did. He specifically set that up so that he could, uh... Yeah, he specifically set it up so that he, he could use the uh, freaking spy the moment I was done. Well, two people can play at that game. Hey, spy. More cards. Oh, wow, I have three of that guy? Do they... Do these guys stack multiplicatively? Because, holy shit, I have three of them. My opponent has passed. All right, what? That's incredibly strange. Huh. I guess I'll just play something real quick. Like a siege weapon or something, just to even the score. Oh, this is awkward, dude. I have to play something kind of strong to make up the gap, because he has such an awkwardly... He has, a, has such an awkward number at 11. Six would make us tie. I might have to just blow this strong catapult card. That's fine, though. I have so many strong cards in my hand right now. Alright, so that's me winning this round with a slight lead. And then next round, I get to do really scary stuff with this giant hand of horrifying cards. <laughs> so he's gonna be pretty screwed. And we get an extra card, so I have a decoy. So if he plays 
If he plays a spy, I get to grab it and then use it against him anyway. Let's just start let's just start playing specials. Jesus Christ, how big is my number gonna be? I'm gonna have such a ridiculous lead this round. I can't see I can't even imagine how he'd beat me. Oh shit, he's that's my medic. Kind of a waste. Oh wait, I can just use it on my other medic. <laughs> there we go. To also do a catapult. <laughs> Alright, so, my entire graveyard's on the board now. I've lost... That means I've spent no cards, aside from... Well, I've spent one spy on him, which he got to keep. Aside from that, I haven't lost a single card. I have every... I have all of them in round three. He, he kind of let me do this. It all comes down to what weather cards he might have, but I have more cards than him to play, so no matter what, I can just nullify weather cards at the very, very end. I'm curious... I'm curious how that card works. If I stack them... I know if I put two of them next to each other, they get twice as strong. Can I put three of them together to make them... Like, all do 12? Also, does it... Does it, does it keep adding... Does it become a times three, or does it become a times four? That could be scary. Oh, that's right, you got a Commander's Horn? I always wait until the, the end to play Commander's Horns, because I, I don't want to... I don't want to invest points in a tile. Now they're all 12. Okay, so it is times three then. I don't... Oh, Dandelion. What does he do? Dandelion, two power. Dandelion, you're a cynic, a lecturer, a whoremonger, a liar, and my best friend. So he has... Oh, he has Commander's Horn. Double strength of all units in that row. That's pretty badass. So he's a built-in Commander's Horn. That's a cool unit. Although he's kind of just a destructible Commander's Horn, so I don't... That's not necessarily a great idea. Like, oh look, it's a commander's horn that you can kill with like one of the with a scorch card because he's in the physical row, or something like that. Oh, you know that that kills the strongest cards. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess the things that would remove him because he's a low power card aren't likely. So I guess it is handy to have a little bonus damage. God, he stands no chance at all. I'll just keep playing cards. I don't think I'll get any use out of those, uh... Really, he passed. He has no more cards to play? I mean, I'm, I'm still gonna rub it in. You can't stop me. Alright, so, play this on the strongest row. Da -dun -da -dun. That's one row worth 92. Uh, put on the bottom row, cause... The, yeah, I can't, I can't do it on a hero. 38. Alright, so I win with 148 points. I'll take that card now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have no idea why he surrendered like immediately in round two. Maybe it's because I put when I put down that hero I put down that uh when I played that spy, it made it made him have like a kind of big lead for so early in the round, so maybe the AI just gave up and quit and said, I'm gonna win obviously, when it, obviously it wasn't going to. Can't rightly recall the last time I was so thoroughly thrashed. The card's yours. Tried your best. Tell me, who else would have worthwhile cards? There's Marquise Serenity, for instance. She don't boast about it, but she has one of the best decks in town and uses it damn well. I know what I'm talking about. Well, we have someone else to look up then. Good to know. We got Vesemir. Let's see what kind of card that is. I wonder... Oh, Vesemir, there it is. Hey, Vesemir, you just a six power card? Kind of a bummer, as far as cards go, but I'm almost certain that I have something weaker. Yeah, he's stronger than, than Zoltan. I'll take Vess out before I take out Zoltan, just because Zoltan at least is a... At least Zoltan is a uh, noteworthy character that we've been spending a lot of time with lately. Cool little dwarf guy that I, get, I did a quest for that is how I got some of these cool cards. That, that card, the one right next to him, funnily enough. It is really weird to think that... It's really weird how all these people are their own cards, though. Oh, well. So we got something. It wasn't great, but we got something. Well, this is a different neighborhood than we've been visiting so far. The sort of upper part of Novigrad. Covered in fires everywhere. Probably all related to the Temple of the Eternal Flame. But up this path, we have a garden that seems to lead our way to Marquis Serenity. 
Good courtesan. This is definitely different territory from the pretty glum out, uh, spots that I've been having access to before. Oh, this is all. This is just another. Pro yeah, this is just another whorehouse for the high class. Okay. Just look at the drink. White Wolf, welcome to the Passive Flora. Oh, no sign of recognition in your eyes. Greetings. Uh... Don't fret. I'm sure I look quite different from when we last saw each other. Uh, which was? Oh, eons ago. You and Master Dandelion appeared, two halflings in tow. What a smash they were, the little chaps. We recount that night to this day. So the, uh, staff hasn't changed since then? Oh, of course it has. It does so incessantly in this business. Burley Berthy married a merchant. Ella struck out on her own. And you'll likely find Cerise Crane at the temple. I alone remain. So, shall I summon the girls? Just remember, this is a decent establishment. Pause to yourself to start with. And our girls are well-mannered. The range of subjects they discuss in detail, I myself find it daunting. Actually, I'd just like to buy something. You sell any night? Yes, she does sell cards. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Scoyatel, five power, Mahakman again. Commander's Horn, just to add to the, pe the stack. Why not? Catapult, Unicard of eight. Tight Bond, that's bonus power for, yeah, that's great. I already have a Catapult, so having a higher level one to put it next to is great. And Dole, Blathana Archer, four strength, okay. That's an improvement, that's significant. Take care now. Gonna have to go ahead and work that in my into my deck real quick. She's not his daughter at all. Go ahead and throw that in there. Let's see, do I want to remove one of my other siege weapons? I might be done with these siege experts. Yeah. Like, congratulations, plus one to all units in that row. But how many cat like how many siege weapons am I gonna have in play at once to justify the fact that it's a one power card? I think removing that's probably my best option right now. And now I have Tight Bond on a Catapult, and I have two Catapults, which means that I can actually get the Tight Bond to trigger, which means we'll have 32 power coming from two cards, which could be pretty goddamn scary, actually. Alright. She's gonna be in trouble. I used that card that she had against him. That guy's not wearing a shirt. Could it be that all roads lead to the Passive Flora? Welcome back. Hmm. When I look at you, why... I almost regret I'm no longer on active duty. That's a sales tactic. Also, I didn't walk away, so I've been here the whole time, you silly woman. I'm curious. You play Gwent? Certainly. Though for high stakes exclusively, of course. In fact, the game would be exceedingly boring without the risk. Up for a round? Why, yes. Let's play. Still kind of wondering what happens if I lose, but also- Oh yeah, I could have just changed the cards out here, forgot about that. Kind of wondering what happens if I lose, but also not in any hurry to lose. Are we playing the same ca No, he's- she's Nilfgaard. Okay, so Nilfgaard wins ties. Good to know. Ooh! Oh, I thought I had two catapults for a second there. I do have these tight bonds, though. But I don't ha Once again, I'm drawing a hand that's weirdly lacking in my cool cards, which is like- Champions, and I have one spy, I guess. And I do have one tight bond couple, but uh, kind of a bummer overall. Hopefully, I'll get rid of this kind of boring. Yeah, this, these two are pretty boring cards that don't have any special effects, so I'd, I'd prefer to swap them out. I currently am pretty represented in a ranged capacity and melee, I guess, so it doesn't matter which ones I swap out either. Hey, we got a match. Cool. The other one I drew was I swapped out a five for a five. God damn it. All right, we have a bad draw. This could be poor for me. My best chance is that uh, Stennis could potentially let it lead to us drawing a medic or a champion, and that's the sounds of fireworks in the background. If you guys can hear that, his power is pick torrential rain from. Okay, yeah, he can do torrential rain whenever he feels like it. So it's a good thing I can wipe out any stuff like that. Well, ideally. 
basically my two chances of getting a better hand are that this guy could draw me something cool and winning a round could draw me something cool. Let's go ahead and just throw him right in there. Just to start things off. Yay, a champion! It's not a medic, but it's, it's not the medic champion, but at least it's something. Nice, strong 10 power card. Let's see. Do I just throw the first round again? I've been doing that a lot. Yeah. Especially since he hasn't, he hasn't pulled it back into his hand yet. It's basically just a tactic to, to draw better cards as fast as possible. <laughs> is to throw the first round and then just never let them win. Alright, there you go, buddy. And now it's in the graveyard, so if he has a medic, he can get it back, but he didn't get a chance to decoy it at the very least. Hey, a 10 power archer. Look at him. Son of a bitch. Let's go ahead and throw in... a hero, just to fuck with him right off the bat. Yeah, you better keep playing cards. Don't think you're safe. Oh, there's a 10 power hero. Alright, this, this, this woman has a stronger deck than some of the previous ones. Morvan Vurhis. Summer sun reflecting in the giant waters of Alba. That's Nilfgaard to me. What's the other one say? Black Infantry Archer. I am for the knee. Oh, that's the, that's the stupid knee character. Okay. We need, to, we need to get some progress getting forward here. Probably gonna have to use some tight bonds to catch up. Commander's Horn. That is a nasty card, having straight up 10 power cards. At some point, you could just collect a bunch of those and you would just have, like, the ultimate deck, right? That is, the, that is the sort of thing about Gwent. Gwent works well in the context of a video game RPG, where you just get objectively better over time, because that's what RPGs play like. But in the, uh, let's see, I just need five to beat him. Alright, so I'll just, I'll just play this one guy and keep the rest of my, in my hand to myself. And I'll draw a new card. Uh, this this game works well in the context of an RPG that you play because you're supposed to have progression in an RPG, so leveling up your deck doesn't really break the game, because it's because that's how these games work. Cool, I've tight bond catapult. He'll be in trouble. Uh, but as far as a real collectible card game goes, this would be a terrible game because so many cards are just objectively better or worse than each other, which is really problematic. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do tight bond. I'm gonna throw my tight bond ranged characters and my tight bond siege characters down, and then I'm gonna commander's horn both of them for what should be pretty comical numbers. He's probably gonna play nasty weather cards, especially since it's a special ability, but I'll just clear that out with my special ability. And since I have more cards left, he'll be extra screwed. I have more cards, so I can stall for longer than he can without it being a problem. So I'll just bide my time and play my cards. It's weird that he was willing to gimp my my cards, because his, his were there, too. I guess mine were probably stronger, though, at that point. Rainfarn. You'll die as painfully as the pathetic traitor Will Windham did. Friendly folk, there are. My siege weapon line is going to be pretty scary in a moment here. Anything nasty? Nope, just more weather. Oh, yeah, I need to make him pass. If I use my clear weather effect right now... Then he'll use his race, he'll use his class ability, his his leader ability to just do another torrential rain. So I specifically need him to pass before I clear the weather. Thankfully, I have more cards, so it works. And let's see, I don't think there's anything he can do to make him not run out of cards faster. So I should win that way. Commander's horn. Not much to talk about at this point because I'm just I'm just going through the motions of just. Dumping my whole hand on the table at this point. He passed. Aha. Uh -huh. Renault Ape Matson. They say Imperia fear nothing. Untrue. Renault scares them shitless. It's my turn. Let's make a mess. I'm already winning anyway. Partly because he gimped his own cards. Look at all them scary ass cards. Let's use my leader ability now. How much did I win by? One billion. I won by a hundred points. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is the card game equivalent of being over level, isn't it? I fail to understand how I lost that. Oh. I believe this card belongs to you now. Know any other players willing to stake rare cards? In Novigrad, Siggy Rubin's collection is famous. You really should challenge him. 
I mean, obviously we're just gonna keep this ball rolling at this point. What do you mean you don't understand how you lost that? I had a hundred more points on you on the, than the on the board than you did. It's pretty straightforward. Our world will burn, burn in the eternal fire. Hey, crazy! You guys just having fun yelling about fire, being creepy? What are you up to? Oh, you just gonna take a nice rest? Oh no, he had to relight his other torch. He had a backup torch. Yes. Piss off. Yes. Piss off. Yes. Piss off. Someone give me a electronic music uh, remix of that. The Yes Piss Off song. 